Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have a quick look at heating elements and how you would test one of these to see if it's actually faulty or not. Now you might think, well, this heating element, if it doesn't heat up, obviously it's busted, but not necessarily because anyway you're going to find a heating element, there's going to be some kind of thermostat or controller, and of course if that's busted, then it's not going to heat up anyway. So, good idea to actually check the element. Pretty straightforward. So uh, let's just have a look at how you would do that. Now we've got a heating element here. This is actually from a storage heater, but all elements are going to be pretty much the same in construction. You're going to have two pins or connections at one end, line and neutral, and it doesn't matter which round those go because it's just a resistive wire inside. And then you're going to have some kind of metallic covering over the whole thing, and you should have a certain amount of resistance between the two pins, which is where the obviously electricity is connected, and you should have basically nothing between the pin and the metallic covering. This covering is either connected to the earth connection, or in some cases it's just left floating, in the case of a storage heater. And if you get any connection between a pin and the outer covering, then something's gone wrong inside. And if you find there's no resistance between these two, then the element is broken internally and will not work. So for the first test then, it's just going to be resistance here, so just select uh, resistance or ohms on whatever device you've got. And it's a good idea just to check between the two leads before testing to make sure the leads are actually connected correctly and they're not broken or the cable's not busted or whatever. So we connect those together, we should get pretty much zero or near enough, 0.12 ohms in this case. Now you can zero that out and get zero here, and you would normally do that if you're testing a circuit. But in the case of an element, because the resistance is large compared to that tiny amount, it doesn't particularly matter. So what we'll do is just connect up to the pins here and then see what we get. So in this case they're 64.9 ohms or say 65 nearly, just sort of between those two. So uh, I can just make a note of that. So 65 ohms. Now what that value is depends on the power of the heating element. We can do a quick calculation in a moment to verify what that is. And the uh, other test is the insulation resistance, so just like we do for testing insulation resistance of a circuit, we're going to use the 500 volt range. This is a 230 volt element, so that would be appropriate for that. And we're going to connect between one of the pins, doesn't matter which one, because again we just checked there was only 65 ohms between them, and then the metal covering at some point, and then we can uh, just test that. So we can see there it's about 1.6 mega ohms or so. It does fluctuate a bit there. Now as we're testing circuits, if it's more than one, then generally it's going to work. This one is a bit low because this is an old element out of some storage heater and it's been stored in a damp shed for quite some time, meaning quite a few years. But this is still usable and what you'll find is if it's a uh, element like that, if you connected this up and it heated up, this would probably increase considerably once it's heated up and cooled because it will drive off any moisture that may have got in there. But again, that's perfectly fine. If it comes up as shorted or it's sort of like 0.1 megohms or something, then the element is faulty and would need to be replaced. Now the resistance does depend on the power of the element, and you can use a quick calculation just to get some idea of what the power of the element was. And again, that should be within the realms of what you would expect. And the formula is voltage squared divided by the resistance. Now in the case of voltage, that's going to be 230 volts, and voltage squared just means the same multiplied by itself, so 230 multiplied by 230, and then we're going to divide all of that by the resistance, which we saw there was 65 ohms that we had before. So uh, just use the uh, calculator there, so 230 multiplied by 230 is whatever that is, and then we're dividing by the 65, so divide by 65, so that gives us a power of... 813 watts in the case of that one. And that's perfectly fine. This is actually an 850 watt heating element. Now, so the figures aren't going to be exact from this. It's just to get a general guide of it's within the right kind of expected thing. If the element was, say, a 2000 watt thing and it came out, say, 1900 and something or 2100, that's perfectly fine. If you're expecting an 850 watt element in this case, and we calculated it was like 7 kilowatts or something, then pretty obviously either this uh, measurement is completely wrong or something's gone horribly wrong somewhere else. So just a bit of sanity check there to make sure that uh, it's within the expected range. So that's heating elements, quite straightforward things. And uh, just a couple of tests there just to make sure that it does actually work and it's not going to trip RCDs and things if the insulation inside has broken down. Now this particular one is out of a storage heater, as we uh, said earlier, 
and uh, in a future video we're going to actually have a look at a storage heater see how those work inside and any kind of troubleshooting on those so that will be coming up in a week or so but until then thanks for watching